it was midnight and our neighbors, not just from uh, our same stairwell apartment, but from the next house that bordered right on the house where we lived, from the other apartment, they knocked on the wall, midnight. Well, they had good reason. Our baby Felix had one of those crying spells. And I think the neighbors thought were abusing him. I don't know what, but it was like, yikes. Not just was I stuck, were we as parents stuck with this crying, bitterly crying baby. And we had tried everything. Put him on the washer, run the spinning cycle. <laughs> Drive around the block, do everything. So there I was. Today's scripture readings are about people who are desperate. The woman has tried everything. For 12 years, she has been to doctor, to doctor, to doctor. The scripture says she suffered much. And she lost everything, everything, everything. Desperate. Jacob is fighting, struggling. It's about life and death. Will I survive? Will I make it through the night? Will I be overcome, subdued? Will I live? Or, and he's right there in the tension, not knowing which way will it go. So he's putting everything in, in the, uh, in the wrestling, in that feels like, And I think it, each and every one of us has been in some way, somehow, in a situation where we did not know, where we were stuck, where we felt like, which way will this go? I got a little bit of that feeling when last week we were in Gettysburg on our vacation going over the battlefield, it's hard to imagine the tragedy, the pain, the suffering there. Gettysburg, the town, the borough, was 2,700 residents at that time. And the two armies together that came together, 160,000. And from 160,000, 50,000 casualties. Seven and a half thousand dead people. Now imagine, three dead people for every inhabitant, for every resident of Gettysburg. Three dead for you, three dead for you, three dead for you, three dead for you. And the 50,000 casualties. 20 casualties for you, 20 for you, 20 for you. It's kind of, it's... What do we do when we are in that place? When we wrestle, when it's really heart-wrenching, when the bottom falls out, when we feel like hitting rock bottom, when we throw our hands up, what do we do then? Christianity and our faith is about that suffering and death do not have the last word. Jesus' suffering brutally hung out, capital punishment, suffering on the cross, dying. It's not the last word or the last happening. Now, when you're in it, it may feel like the last thing. Like, you, I cannot take one more thing or whatever, wherever we have been. So sometimes, the best thing we can do is, 
be with people in their suffering, in their desperation, in their brokenness, in their wrestling, in their suffering. Sometimes we cannot do a thing about it, but just be there in the suffering and enduring it and holding it with just a little bit hope. And sometimes we may not even be able to hold that hope, but other people will hold it for us by being with us in that darkness, in that brokenness. The woman, she has run out of options. She just does not know what else to do. She is desperate. Her last hope is Jesus. She comes, she, it's almost like on her knees, she crawls from behind just to touch his garments, just to experience him, just to feel him close. And in that encounter with the living Christ, something happens, some healing, some wholeness happens. Jacob, wrestling for his life, at some point the sun rises from the deep darkness, from his desperation, from his feeling like overcome. I can't do it anymore. He's hanging in there, and then the sun rises, the morning breaks, and something shifts. The interesting thing, and I love this about this story and the other stories, is Jacob comes out with a limp. He comes out hurting. He comes out injured. And that is the same way how Jesus is being raised when Thomas asks him, see the wound marks. We're all wounded, we're all survivors in one way or another. We have been there in one way or another, or we'll get there. And what Jesus does and what we do is, we don't cover up those wound marks. We don't have to put makeup on. We can be real our battle scars. There was a terrorist with an AK-47 kicking in the door, ready to shoot everyone who was in that room. When the door flew open, he saw a mom grieving over her dead baby. And the family together, they're grieving. He came in ready to shoot, but when he saw the baby, the dead baby, the mom, something shifted. Something touched him, and he stepped out. When we feel the pain, when we touch each other, when we're with each other in the suffering, and not run from it, and not take it out on others, some things can shift, some change some transformation can take place. And that is the Easter change in our hearts. The sun comes up in the morning. There is a bomb in Gilead. 